Okay, so uh, right now we're ready to um, reference my log development. So um, I'm gonna uh, go into uh, my MT scene already prepared and I'm gonna directly save it at the right uh, place. So I'm gonna go into my first shot, first animation, first, uh, uh, first sequence, first shot, and let's say that is gonna be the 100,000 V1. Okay, so what do I need in this scene? Uh, first of all, I'm gonna change uh, my settings to keep my 175 uh, aspect or going for something 4K or I don't know what I need. Um, I'm gonna import uh, some elements of my uh, animation. So all, all the cache I got from the animation department. Um, so they gave me um, this camera. They gave me also this animation of my main asset. So I don't want to get any collision. So I'm going to call it Frodon underscore Annie to uh, uh, differentiate it from my log development. Okay, and I'm going to select my main character. And I'm gonna pick the camera, say that's gonna be the main camera, uh, saying that's gonna be the uh, project ratio. And what do I need? It's um, right now it's um, setting my uh, lighting render graph. So I'm gonna call it the name of my shot and maybe leak for lighting. So that's, that's my render graph and I'm gonna change the order of my render graph because I want to be sure that it's going to be above all the other one. Uh, if you remember, uh, my look dev uh, render graph was a order of about two. So this one is going to be at the order of about 10 because if I want to overwrite something at the shot, uh, something at the, at the last time, uh, that's something I, I want to be sure that's going to be over every uh, thing I did uh, into my look dev scene. And right now I'm gonna import uh, my look dev uh, scene. Uh, so let's go to save, setup, Frodon, shading, scene, Frodon. And I'm gonna call it Frodon underscore look to differentiate it from the other reference I've got. Okay. And if we have a look into my scene, we can have a look that my object, even if you change some parameters in the hierarchy, as you can see, it doesn't get the Frodon underscore C body, it just gets the C body. But as I got Frodon N, the name of the node into my uh, naming, uh, it's gonna work. So let's create into my lighting scene, a simple light. In this case, square light. I'm gonna go through the uh, live render graph. So I just wanna pick my light, say, okay, I just draw a draw bit and uh, I'm gonna select my asset, press F to fit, go back to my perspective view. So my light is fitting and let's get a bigger light because I just, I won't be sure that it's gonna, um, in the scene, just simple. So um, little tricks, if you want to get the uh, camera that you're looking through, selecting the error node, uh, press S, select camera, and uh, you're gonna select it automatically. So I can go quickly to a camera to uh, my light if I want to go through. So, okay, let's say blah, blah, blah. This is my light. I do my super work of lighting. Okay, so I'm good. Um, I've got my uh, look development, I've got my animation. Um, I know it's starting at 100 with a pre-roll, it's ending at 150. Okay, so that's it. Let's have a look through the camera. It's caching the uh, elements and right now it's working. So, I come a scene and I'm gonna have a look right now, I'm gonna render it. Okay, so it's working. Uh, my uh, assembly scene uh, do it 
is doing the right it's work it's doing the right thing um what i get it's i've got a reference from my look development and uh that here is and uh it's referencing always this render graph and all the time and if i'm improving and uh, rebuilding the shot or updating my references it's going to work dyna dynamically so if you want to get something like say okay uh but right now i've got something saying that uh, uh what part okay so let's say that uh, this part gonna be the close uh, uh, um okay so this elements seems to be close so let's say that okay this one we're gonna connect through this one intersection and um we're gonna create another shader and this one is gonna turn into something well it's gonna be dirty mass okay and as there is only a pawn so maybe it's gonna work for all of them great so it's working for all of them i'm saving publishing it and uh if i want to update my render i just have to click on my reference right click real reference and re-render and that's it it's linking dynamically all uh my assets um, if I want to go for something partial because, uh, you know, the, uh, for any reason I change my mind into this shot, I just want to override, I can add all the time picking my elements, getting, create a new shader and say that this one is going to turn into another diffuse color, say that's, that's bloody mass. And that's going to be an override at the shot. It's not gonna change anything about the look development of my general look of my asset. It's just gonna be something per shot. So all the time I can overwrite per shot some elements. And that's because my render graph here is gonna be on, always at the reference of two. And this one is gonna be at the reference of 10. Um, it's totally up to you to play with all the level of references. Uh, you can get something like 10, 100, 1000, it's not gonna make any sense, but there is no limitation about that. Um, I always want, want a good advice for you guys, it's uh, always keep space uh, between the orders, because some parts you can get something like a different render graph that's uh, is gonna be activate some some scene and you wanna be sure that you got uh, still the space to override, uh, get a uh, look about the other, about three or about four or something like that. So uh, it's the same case that's uh, naming uh, sequences and shots you want to get space between the elements to uh, insert some elements between the uh, classification, classification and priority or, or, or your ordering of your elements. Thank you for watching this.